Now, 69 was a year when we started a couple new projects, I think. Judgments with Kaplan and Shapiro and property reexamination with Kasner. And Louis lost his federal securities code. That's quite an order. Yeah. Come on the plate well, in one year. Well, that was because of the things we'd completed. Yep. We completed the division of jurisdiction, the state and gift tax. Uh, land use was coming to a close. That's the year Bosselman came in and yeah. he kind of... Uh, yeah. Well, we pretty much had three projects uh, either finished or finishing. And uh, so we had three places on the agenda for new projects. Article 9 was then continuing. That wasn't completed till uh, 71. And there you had two new reporters to contend with, or to work with. I shouldn't say contend. Uh, Wade succeeded Prosser, who had been a reporter since 54, and uh, Farnsworth uh, succeeded uh, Brauker. But uh, then I'm looking at your 72 report, and that's the one in which you gave a 10-year review. It was your first 10 years as, as reporter. And it was a director, you mean. A director, I'm sorry. It was rather impressive. You said we're working on pre then working on pre-arrangement procedure, torts, contracts, land use, the Federal Securities Code, judgments. Landlord and tenant, and Article Nine. Your responsibilities seem to getting be getting broader. Still holding up. Well, uh, in the internals of some of those were simplifying. Uh, I mean, we were getting near the end. Then we come to uh, 73, that was the 50th anniversary, and I think it was your idea to have that 50th anniversary issue to reprint the uh, original report that yeah. led to the uh, organization of the Institute. Yes, I think one of the very important things about the Institute is to take full advantage of its uh, uh, many, many years of continuous uh, existence and production and service. And uh, it seems to me one way to uh, pull in the current generation in a uh, setting that uh, took advantage of this uh, historic continuity uh, was to go back to the uh, original. I, I'm sure many people who never read that uh, original report uh, read it in connection with that anniversary. I notice in your uh, 74 annual report you took up this proposal for a National Institute of Justice and didn't treat it too kindly. Well, this was a crazy idea. This was a proposal to have one organization uh, be responsible for the improvement of the law in every jurisdiction in the country, or at least that's the way I read it. And it was that aspect of it that I uh, called attention to as uh, gently but as critically as I could. Of course, nothing's ever happened with it. No, I don't think you helped give it its final bullet, as it were. I keep referring to this, and I hope you don't mind, again, in 74, you were talking to the restatement of contracts, and that's where you mentioned that the statutory norm was being treated as a premise for legal reasoning, referring to Brocker's, uh, to uh, the use by by uh, Farnsworth of uh, reliance on the uh, UCC. UCC. Now, 75, the two projects that were pending when, when you came in, and 62 finally came to conclusion and formed proposed official draft, the model pre-arraignment code, 
and a model land development code. And then in the next year, there was a change in administration, as you may recall. Uh, Norris stepped down. We haven't said much about Norris Darrell. You want to say a word about Norris? Yeah, I thought he was rather a kindly, gentle soul. Well, of course, Norris was responsible, I'm sure, for my appointment. Uh, and uh, during the years from uh, uh, 19... We're talking about 1963. Three. What did I start? Yeah. 1963 to his uh, resignation uh, was 76. 76. Right. So that's uh, 13, 13 years. Uh, during those years, uh, we worked together. Very I think we're all set now, huh? We were talking about Norris, who was president during your your first years as 13 years as a reporter. And in relation to that, Tweed, who was president when you were for your years as director, and Tweed, who was president in your years as reporter. That's right. As I recall, Tweed attended uh, most of your meetings, advisory committee meetings. He often did, yes. Uh, certainly he did more than Norris did uh, attend advisory committee meetings, and this was, I think, well, this was reflected a difference in the personalities of the two men. I, I think one would say that Norris was a much better delegator than Tweed. Uh, but not, the, the great thing, the, the thing that Norris offered as uh, president to a director was, first of all, his availability whenever the director sought uh, advice or discussion or help. Is that working? Yep, I think so. Uh, second, his, uh, his very studious uh, non-interference with the details of the operation, which he uh, He, he, I think his, his large corporate experience gave him a sense for uh, how a CEO, uh, how a, chair, a board chairman ought to operate in relation to a CEO uh, who was somebody else. And uh, he did that just right. He, he provided encouragement and uh, sustenance and wise guidance uh, when his guidance was sought, uh, but he didn't. Uh, he didn't dabble around in the detail. He expected that the director would bring to him any problem that uh, had a significant public relations dimension uh, or that uh, called for the best judgment, uh, an organizational judgment, uh, judgment about the nature and future of the organization. 
In the uh, years following 77, uh, well, in 77, contracts were still going on. Land uh, UCC Article 8 came up. Uh, we had the tax projects, as you remember, K, subchapter K, subchapter C, and international aspects of U.S. income taxation. And then uh, we started thinking about a new restatement of foreign relations law. Right. And that adventure into ele electronic fund transfers, or the new payments codes, with Hal Scott. Uh, that was also quite an agenda uh, that was capped later on by uh, the exploration of doing a project in corporate governance right. following a series of invitational conferences and, uh, and restitution with uh, Bill Young. Uh, I, Remember the introduction of uh, Chief Justice in 19, uh, in the year you stepped down, what was that, 1984, uh, in which he quotes, who, he quotes somebody saying, you complimenting your great agility of being able to jump in and deal substantively with this very diverse group of subjects. And, uh, I always marvel at your great capacity in that respect of uh, whether it was subchapter K, or foreign relations law, or even electronic funds transfers, or UCC. How much time did you give to studying the drafts for those, or did all this come to you naturally? No, I really worked very hard on the drafts. I mean, these were tended to be periods when, uh, you know, I had my teaching uh, and really wasn't doing anything else, uh, except for completing the New York Times case, which uh, was on my docket uh, when I became director. And, and, and call involved the required the postponement of my uh, incumbency for some six or eight months. I forget what it was. During which, by the way, I did not get paid uh, anything uh, by the institute. But after the decision in the New York Times case. And finishing up a few obligations that I had to the Times in relation to other cases, I simply didn't take on any uh, uh, any assignments in practice. I mean, either advisory or oper operative uh, for. For that 20-year period, and I, I considered that I was obliged to give the institute substantially all my time, other than that required for teaching, and I was paid accordingly. Well, th this is a, well. I, I might add here: the directors of the institute have always been underpaid, <laughs> but be that as it may. Uh, this is maybe a personal question, but I hope it won't be modest. Was, was it hard work jumping around from subject to subject to subject, or did your facility for grasping the issues and seeing the problems sort of come naturally with you? Well, I think I have an aptitude for it, obviously. And, uh, but uh, it's not an aptitude I can put to use without pretty solid preparation. After all, if you're talking about, you know, talking about drafts, the first thing you have to do is read them <laughs> uh, to be able to work with them. But uh, on the other hand, I didn't, I didn't, uh, one reason why I was so happy in the 
work was that it seemed to be up my alley and uh, uh, and I didn't suffer uh, with the work. And indeed, I found the reporter's job a, a harder job because uh, writing has always been for me a uh, an enervating experience. I mean, I seem to be an oral person rather than a written person. But, uh, uh, I don't dictate letters even, for example. My mode of work is with a yellow pad and a pencil. Uh, I wouldn't be happy with a uh, word processor or, or even less so with a computer but I I, I did find the variety uh, was an excellent uh, safeguard against boredom and I did try to assure that the program of the Institute had sufficient variety so that uh, a person interested in law uh, would find it interesting almost no matter what his specialty might be. Well, I think I have about two or three questions left. One is, why, why are we having the difficulties that seem to be coming up with corporate governance? I, I don't recall that coming up in any other project. It's just maybe a hint of it in torts when they did 402A, and uh, then, they, of course, there was that problem with the UCC when it was first promulgated and had to be revised in New York. But corporate governance seems to be engendering particular difficulties. And, and as you said earlier, we dropped a business association's project some years ago. Is the subject one that doesn't lend itself to academics and law and judges and general practitioners? Addressing it? I, I don't think there's any bearing that the experience of the uh, early period has any bearing on the experience of the later period. I mean, there was no public opinion problem. Uh, no, we, 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 we dropped the corporate, the business association project uh, because we ran out of funds. And it wasn't a project which, uh, at that time, in the, what are we talking about, the late 20s, probably, uh, or early 30s at the mo most, uh, uh, had any sex appeal, really. And the Depression had hit, and funds had dried up. Uh, that was the story of the of the early days, as I see it. Well, what happened? What's the problem today? Well, I I I I, I think that uh, I can't avoid I can't avoid stating that. Uh, I think that there was a gross ineptitude in that first draft in corporate governance. Uh, ineptitude in the sense of uh, of the work itself, and second that the mode of expression uh, did not take account in any sophisticated way of the organized sensitivities that had developed at the corporate bar and in the organization 
of uh, opinion uh, of uh, corporate uh, personnel, executives, and uh, and directors. I think if we'd had the benefit of wiser counsel, if what's his name hadn't died. Ray Garrett. If Ray Garrett hadn't died. If he'd remained the uh, chief reporter for the project, I don't think we'd have gotten into any trouble at all because he would have been sensitive to these unnecessary irritants that were in that draft. Uh, I hadn't been working in the corporate field. I, I, uh, I, I did, as a matter of fact, have a good deal to do with the elimination of some of those unnecessary irritants before any draft was made public. But you remember that uh, we got the initial reaction on the basis of the uh, multi-list graph, graph, the, the uh, preliminary graph, which ought not to have been uh, distributed in many quarters where it was in fact uh, distributed by, to people who uh, did not preserve the confidentiality uh, uh, limitations. Uh, that the draft carried. I must say, though, that for me, I, I too was inadequately attuned to the nature of the terrain in which we were working. Uh, there are mitigations, I think. We'd had such a, a splendid relationship with the corporate bar in doing the, uh, the Federal Securities Code. Uh, there, after all, we were dealing with issues of perhaps greater moment to uh, uh, Wall Street uh, than anything in, the, in that first corporate governance draft. Uh, but uh, they were handled with sophistication and knowledgeability, and uh, while there were differences of opinion and issues were raised, and some of them were important, uh, we were working together. I assumed that we had succeeded in uh, conscripting for the corporate governance project all the goodwill that we had developed in our work on the Federal Securities Code. And I thought that the, uh, the, uh, that this was uh, guaranteed, really, uh, by the regional conferences that uh, you remember were held before we embarked on the project. And the uh, thrust of which was uh, throughout the country uh, to uh, urge the Institute to uh, dig into uh, corporate law as a uh, field that needed the uh, kind of in-depth uh, analytical work uh, that the Institute would do. The first uh, anxiety that I had, I must confess, was when I read that first, that preliminary draft, uh, and uh, I got agreement to, from the reporters, particularly the chief, the then chief reporter, to uh, eliminate some material, but it I didn't get it soon enough. Uh, 
I should have had it. I should have seen that preliminary draft before it was duplicated and distributed. I, so I blame myself a good deal for uh, that. I, I was uh, coasting along on the uh, on the sense of good relations that had been developed by Louis Loss and his his uh, colleagues uh, working on the uh, on the securities code. Now, it's interesting, uh, just a year or two before then is when the policy decision was made to distribute preliminary drafts beyond the Council on Advisors. And that's the current policy, and, and your uh, explanation of what happened raises a question about whether the wisdom of such a policy, uh, we haven't had the same episode since then, but it could occur again. Once the die is cast, people don't remember anything that happens after that. Right. Uh, and this uh, conversation wouldn't be complete without having at least a brief statement from you of your views on the ABA ALI partnership and post admission legal education. Remember that famous conference at the Association of the Bar at Ross Malone called a summit meeting? Yeah. When the ABA wanted to withdraw? Well, as you know, my position has always been to uh, buy them a ticket and say, and say goodbye. Uh, I, I'm not even satisfied today that from the point of view of either the ALI's own mission or uh, pleasure and working with the educational side of our work uh, that uh, we gain anything uh, from the association uh, with the ABA. And I know that we Uh, to some extent, uh, hampered and limited by that uh, that uh, association. But uh, in the early days, when the matter seemed to be an issue, uh, I didn't hesitate to uh, express these views in meetings of the board or whatever you call the governing body of the of Ali Abra. Committee. Committee. That's right. Meetings of the committee. Uh, I didn't hesitate to say to express these views when they were relevant in meetings of the I have not been uh, associated with that work for the last <coughs> five years, and if I now were, it may well be that I would take a different view of the matter. I think that as director, you have done a marvelous job uh, of avoiding the difficulties that the collaboration is always involved and I know and respect uh, your view that there are advantages in it as well as uh, dis disadvantages. I no longer worry about it because I'm satisfied that if the ABA should ever decide again that it was interested in going its own way, uh, that uh, the Institute would continue its part of the work. Uh, Ali Abba would simply become ALI, and uh, I don't believe that the work would suffer.
Well, this has been a long session, and uh, I'm going to impose on you by asking you a broad question about the future. What, if anything, would you do to revise the, uh, the way the Institute operates, the way its membership is selected, the way the council is elected, the way leadership is provided? Uh, are there any changes that you think are indicated, or would you let well enough alone and think that things are working pretty well and we continue on the same way? Well, let me say that I think that if I was still involved in policy making on these points, uh, I probably would not have favored the principal change that has been made uh, in uh, institute procedures, uh, namely uh, uh, opening the matter up to uh, a further preliminary discussion among volunteer groups of members, and that is the, uh, the invitation to the entire membership to uh, receive the drafts before their, the council receives them and uh, works on them. Uh, I understand the, uh, uh, the uh, impulse uh, on the part of the membership to uh, get involved more deeply than just attending the annual meeting and participating in the review of the drafts there. And I understand the desire on the part of the leadership uh, to satisfy that Im impulse. Uh, but on the other hand, I keep worrying uh, that the uh, devoting more and more time to more and more conferences with more and more people uh, will in the long run uh, detract from rather than improve the quality of the work. And it does seem to me that the uh, pristine concept of a reporter, a group of advisors, uh, the council, and the institute, uh, which after all uh, already calls for three levels of review, uh, makes the procedure arduous enough uh, from the point of view of a reporter. On the other hand, I, I'm gratified to see that in the, uh, in, in the areas where these uh, preliminary conferences have taken place, uh, both the uh, member participants and the reporter participants uh, seem to feel that the effort has been worthwhile. I am right about that, am I not? Yes, I, and uh, lest somebody else be blamed for this procedure, I was the instigator of it, so I'll have to plead guilty if it turns out to be improvident. Well, I think your, your judgment's no doubt better than mine. I view it, I guess, still uh, from the point of view of the working staff who has to get the material out and who wants as much time as possible to have it in the best shape uh, that it can be in. Any other aspects that, uh, for the future? Uh, size of the council too large, too small, uh, not sufficiently diverse? Uh, uh, the annual meeting too large? We're getting to have a larger membership now, as you're aware. Yeah. No, I don't uh, sit here with any, uh, any program for modification. I think probably if I had continued as director, I would have been less responsive to the proposals for change uh, like the ones that we've been talking about uh, than uh, my successor has been. But uh, that may simply demonstrate the uh, wisdom of uh, my 
feeling that when you're approaching the age of 75, the thing to do is to retire. You think that's the crucial age, 75? <laughs> I mean, I have three more years to go. <laughs> well, Herb, thanks very much. Uh, what do you mean I have three more? I have three more years oh, to you go. Have. <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, well, well, that's you encouraging. May be, you may be an exception to the rule. But uh, uh, thanks very much. Uh, I'm delighted we had this session, and uh, I think uh, future sessions are as fruitful. This project may have some merit after all. Well, I'll be at your call as long as I'm on deck.